This is AMD RX 9070 GRE, a graphics card that is being sold exclusively in China. But I'm sure it's gonna be sold at some point to the Western market, so let's see how good this GPU is and who does it compete against on the green side. You're probably aware that Nvidia, Intel, AMD, they all make Chinese exclusive products and this is one of those products. This graphics card, just like 9070 XT and 9070, is based on Navi 48 chip. It's basically a very cut down version of 9070. Basically 25% of this chip is disabled and you also get 4 less gigabytes of VRAM and that lowers memory bandwidth significantly. In this review we're going to take a look at Gigabyte 9070 GRE Gaming, which is absolutely identical to 9070 Gaming. Like seriously, unless you look at the name on this tiny white tag, you will not be able to tell them apart. They're absolutely identical. So Gigabyte just took the gaming version of 9070 and made a 9070 GRE out of it. And by that I mean they're using the same cooling solution. Obviously the VRAM chips are not there and the chip is different. I was able to purchase this graphics card from a Chinese seller for around 500 US dollars. The cheapest 50 cents was around $50 more, so not a bad deal. So in order to properly evaluate its performance against the nearest graphics card from AMD and Nvidia, I'm gonna take the 9070 non-XT version, 9060 XT 16 gig, and unless you play only esports titles, do not buy the 8 gigabyte version ever, and RTX 5070 from Nvidia. Basically this GPU is the missing link between 9060 XT and 9070. Now let's take a look at all the specs of these graphics cards. In terms of ROPs and shader counts, it's significantly more than 9060 XT, which is running a different chip. But because AMD removed the two memory chips and the bus width is now 192 bits, but it's not the bus width alone, they also lowered the memory frequency, so overall it's quite significantly lower than the 9070. And because of that, we now might be able to see a graphics card that is gonna be directly comparable to RTX 5070, because the 9070 is actually slightly faster than the 5070. And before we begin the tests, you're probably wondering what's with all the Clone Wars here? How did you end up with 4GB gaming cards on the table? And no, Gigabyte didn't sponsor this, this is just what I had on hand and what I managed to get from my subscribers. As a test system, I'm gonna use this Gigabyte B850 Elite motherboard since I had it for the review. CPU is gonna be PBO tuned 9700X and manually tuned DDR5-6400. Now, before we begin, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel. The channel growth really motivates me to do more videos. And the first test is Time Spy. And as you can see, the 9070 GRE and 5070 are really close to each other. I ran this test three times and you're seeing the best result out of three. And 9060 is like nowhere near these two graphics cards and 9070 is significantly faster. Now let's run some games. First Full HD, then 1440p, everything on Ultra and no upscaling. If upscaling is enabled by default, I disable it. The main thing I want to compare is the performance of GRE against 5070 and in this game it's very much identical. The FPS difference is basically within the margin of error. RX 9070 is significantly faster than both of these graphics cards and 9070 XT is significantly slower than everyone else. Just to be clear, all tests are being run at least three times and on the slides you see the average result. Overall, not a bad start for this graphics card. Let's see the next game. Clear Obscure Expedition 33, Epic Settings, no upscaling. For some reason Unreal Engine games really like to enable upscaling, even at Full HD. And in this game, it's also very very close between these two graphics cards, but GRE is a, just a touch slower. 9070 is significantly faster and 9660 is significantly slower, just the same as it was in the previous game. So RTX 5070 wins, but only by a few percent. Next game is Last of Us Part 2, all settings maxed out with no upscaling. The FPS is similar, but you can clearly see the difference, though it's not very huge. 9070 faster, 9060 slower, just like with every other game before. 
So RTX 5070 is a touch faster in this game than GRE. Next to Cyberpunk, I maxed the settings on Ultra and then disabled the upscaling and restarted the game because if you don't, the settings are messed up. And in Cyberpunk 5070 takes the lead. It's not as fast as 9070 in this game, but it's 9% faster than the GRE. So not a huge win, but definitely a win for 5070. Next is Indiana Jones, settings are set to supreme, ray tracing set to minimum, and no upscaling. In this game, it favors Nvidia just slightly more than AMD. We see 5070 here is closer to 9070, and GRE is, though not very much, but still is behind. We see the same 9% FPS average advantage of 5070. It's very close to 9070 in this game. Now let's take a look at a few games that really favor one side or the other. Spider-Man 2, all settings maxed out, no upscaling. And here we can see RTX 5070 barely struggling to beat 9060 XT, which is, well, ridiculous, we all know that. But this game just favors red GPUs, so we see a huge leap forward in terms of performance for 9070 GRE compared to 5070. But if we take a look at Kingdom Come Deliverance and set all the settings to Ultra with no upscaling, we see absolutely different picture. In this game, even RX 9070 is unable to compete with RTX 5070. So yeah, this is what happens if you don't properly optimize the game for both sides. And if we take a look at Stalker 2, when all settings set to Epic and disable the upscaling, RTX 5070 is almost as fast as RX 9070, and 9070 GRE is just very far behind. So if this is your favorite game, you probably should prefer Nvidia. Now let's raise the resolution to 1440p with all the settings remaining the same, and the result is not very different than what we saw at Full HD. GRE and 5070 are very close to each other, but GRE now is just a touch slower than 5070. This game doesn't really favor AMD or Nvidia. And in Expedition 33 we see the same thing. Though RTX 5070 and RX 9070 GRE are really close to each other, the GRE is just a touch slower. Basically, a few percent difference in favor of RTX 5070. In Last of Us Part 2, the FPS is identical. Both graphics cards show absolutely the same result. GRE wins slightly only by 1% lows. I really wonder what changed for this game when we raised the resolution. In Indiana Jones, firstly 12 gigs of VRAM is almost fully saturated, yay! But this video is not about that. But the resolution increased, RTX 5070 now is even more in the lead, now competes to 9070. Probably has something to do with ray tracing being always on. In Cyberpunk, resolution increase has no effect on FPS difference. We still see the same 9% FPS difference in favor of 5070. And honestly, it's already enough to understand the performance of this graphics card, because it's either the same or slightly lower in performance as RTX 5070, at least in games that do not favor one or the other side. If we take a look at games such as Spider-Man 2, we see significant difference in favor of GRE. If RTX 5070 can barely compete with 9060 XT, something is wrong. But if we look at games that favor green over red, we see that RTX 5070 now competes with RX 9070, and increasing the resolution did nothing for this game, the GRE is very much behind. And it's the same thing for Stalker 2. It's 9070 who competes with RTX 5070 in this game. It's actually really funny that you need an RTX 5070 to run any game at ultra settings with native resolution at 60 frames per second. But that's not the point of this video. RTX 5070 wins by a huge margin compared to GRE. But now let's look at ray tracing. We're only gonna look at a few titles in Full HD. And let's begin with Oblivion. And this game doesn't really drop FPS that much when you enable ray tracing. And the FPS drop from both sides is not really that bad and very, very comparable. That may have something to do with me not using a very RT heavy scene, but let's look at the other games too. 
In Cyberpunk, we see significant FPS drop when I enabled ray tracing. The ray tracing is set to high in this game. The FPS drop is slightly higher on the red side, but it's not that significant. Both guards are very much capable of running rays in this game. In Spider-Man 2, the FPS drop for the red side is slightly higher than for the green side. I only wanted to enable ray tracing for a few games just to see that, yeah, this GPU is identical to the other GPUs from AMD in the 9000 series. The FPS drop from enabling ray tracing is the same. Green cards are still a little better for ray tracing experience. So. What's the conclusion? Well, it's an interesting GPU, and honestly, I think AMD should have released this GPU to the global market instead of RX 9070. The poorly bent chips was supposed to be used for this GPU, and it was supposed to be released to the global market with a price significantly lower than RTX 5070. Like, I see no problem buying this thing if it was like a hundred, maybe slightly more dollars cheaper than an RTX 5070 it would be a very decent deal. So, though this GPU right now is exclusive to China, it will be released to the global market at certain point, just like it was with 7900 GRE. And at that point, if it's gonna be priced competitively against something like an RTX 5070 or whatever will be on the market at that time that Nvidia offers, it's definitely gonna find its place on the market but the price really matters for this GPU. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.